In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to create a scrolling backdrop like the one you see here. So our character, you'll actually notice, stays right in the center of the screen, and instead the background and the world moves around her. This can help because it'll give you like the ability to create a sort of endless world where you can keep going uh, without being limited to this little 400 and, uh, 480 pixel box. So to start out with, I want to kind of explain how the theory of this works. So let's pretend that this box right here is like our scratch player. It's this, it's this thing right here. It's our game screen. And we're also going to pretend that this right here is the image that we're going to use for our background. So in this case, it's, uh, it's this. It's this background image. Okay, so this is the image and this is the screen. So normally when you're making games, the way it works is you put the background image right on top of the screen and that's it, right? Nothing moves. Your character, let's say your character is this little circle here. Your character like moves around the screen and they're kind of limited to that area, right? So instead of doing that, what we're going to do instead is have the background itself be what moves, and the character is going to stay still right in the center of the screen. Now that might seem simple enough to start with. You just have your background move forward or backward depending on what buttons the character is pressing, but it's actually a little bit complicated because if you go too far, like to here, right, your background image is going to be cut off. You're only going to see this much of the image, and then you're going to have a big white space gap over here. And so the way it's going to end up working is we're going to create two separate images. We're going to put them next to each other, and we're going to do this. We're going to put them we're going to put them on like this. And so you'll see one image and then when your character starts moving forward, we'll start scrolling both images together. And so it'll look like it'll look like a continuous progression of the same image. And then once we get to the end here, we'll take this image that's no longer on the screen, move it to the front, all the way to the right, and then we'll start scrolling them again like this. And so this sort of creates this this illusion of always going of your characters like always moving forward. Um, even though really we only have these two screens and we're just cycling through them over and over again. And then you could do the same thing if you went backwards too. So if our character started moving backwards, we would do the same thing. We'd get to here, we'd move our right screen to the left, and then you know we'd keep going backwards and so on. And that lets us create a really smooth, nice looking sort of infinite uh, movement system where we can just keep exploring the world forever. All right, so to start out with, we have our game here as normal. The first thing I'm going to do is make Adventure Girl a little bit smaller. I'm going to make her 30. She's much too big right now. There we go. And now the first thing we actually need is to get our background. So again, I'm going to go to the free game arts. This will be linked in the description. And I'm going to choose the graveyard tile set and click on free download. And that should download the tile set for me. And then once you have the tile set downloaded, you can go to your downloads, uh, right click it here and say extract all and click extract. And then we'll have those files in our download folder uh, to use. So now if I go into scratch, I can say upload sprite and I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose the BG background. So if you go to the graveyard tile set, there's a PNG, and then inside PNG, there's a BG.png. I'm gonna load that, and there's our background. And then I'm gonna make it just a, just a little bit bigger, real quick. We want to make it take up this whole space on the screen. There we go. So now we've got it. Um, I also want to really quickly put in a piece of code here that sends this to the back. We always want the background uh, sprite here to be in the very back behind our character. So we're going to say go to back layer and then when we click start that'll keep Adventure Girl up in the front for us. And so now usually what we would do from here is we would have Adventure Girl uh, we would start changing Adventure Girl's like movement. We would start we would start putting in code here in motion where we'd be saying like change X whenever you press the A key and that would make Adventure Girl move right or left, right? But we're not going to do that because we're not going to make her move right or left. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to make the background move right or left. So to do that, we're, since 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 this is uh, the background is a separate sprite, we're going to need some variables to control that since we can't access its movement properties from here. So to do that, we're going to start by creating a variable called uh, adventure girl speed. So we're going to let's call it a, a current speed. And this will be whatever speed she's currently moving at. So this variable will be set to zero generally. So we'll put this in the forever loop. We'll set it to zero always, unless if we're touching the D key, we want to set it to a different number. We want to set it to positive three because she's moving forward, right? So we'll set it to positive three. And then if she's moving backwards, then we'll set it to negative three. She's moving backwards. Uh, and then otherwise, if we're not pressing one of those two keys, this, this will set it to zero by default. And so now we can access this current speed uh, uh, variable in our background, and that'll let us control how the background moves. Whenever she's, whenever she's moving, it'll be three, and then we can use that to make our background move three. One more thing I want to do real quick is add in a little bit of a platform to my background, because right now it kind of looks like she's floating on nothing. So I'm going to add that real quick. I'm just going to speed through this.
perfect. There we go. So now we've got our platform. We'll move her down just a little bit further. I think 95 will be, yeah, that looks good. So now I want to use this current speed to actually change what the background is doing. So to start with our very first background image here, we only have the one right now. So to start with, we're going to create a variable for this background uh, image and we're going to call it X position one or X, X, X pause one. And that's going to track what the current position of our background is supposed to be. When we first start out the game, we want to set that value to zero. So we'll take X position one and we'll set it to zero. And then from then on out, we're going to set it based on whatever uh, Adventure Girl's current speed is. So I'm going to put in a forever loop. And then inside the forever loop, we're going to say change, uh, change our X position one. Oh, whoops, I said set. Change our X position one by, and we're going to change it by whatever her current speed is. So we're going to change X position by her current speed. If we start this now, you'll see that whenever her speed changes, X position will start to change up or down. But that's not actually moving the background yet, because so far we're still just doing this with variables. So we need to actually have some code to move our background object here. And so the code we're going to use is go to XY. And the Y is always going to be zero because we're not changing how it looks up and down. We're not moving it up and down. We're just moving it left and right. And the X is going to change though. The X is going to be whatever the value of X position currently is because we've changed that by whatever whatever her, her speed is. So if I click start now, you'll see that when she moves, instead of her moving, she stays right in the center of the screen and the background moves instead. Uh, you may be noticing a, a few things wrong with this. One of the things is the background moves the wrong way. She runs forward, but it seems like she's going backwards. She's going away from it. And that's because we have the, the direction the background moving is, is actually backwards. Because think about this, if Adventure Girl is running forward, if she's going in a positive direction, then the background should be going in a negative direction, right? The background should be going uh, the, the other way. It shouldn't, the background shouldn't be moving forward across the screen. It should be moving this way to the left across the screen. And so we actually need to flip this number. Her, whatever her current speed is, we need to do the reverse of it because it's the, it, this is the background moving, not her moving. And so it goes it goes the opposite of whatever, however fast she's moving, the background goes, whatever direction she's moving, the background goes the opposite direction, right? So. To do that, we'll say, we'll just multiply this by a negative one. Uh, so we'll take negative one times current speed, and that will reverse the direction it's moving. So now if I go in a direction, the background now correctly moves away from her, the, other, the opposite direction to the way she's supposed to be moving, which creates our uh, effect correctly. So this all works right now, but you'll see an issue right away, which is that this, this background only exists for a second here, and then we almost immediately get onto this uh, empty white space, which we really don't want. So that's something we need our second background image for. Right now we only have the one. We need to add a second one uh, so that we can have it right here in the right here when uh, this one starts disappearing. So to do that, I'm going to start by just duplicating uh, this background because it's going to be very similar. And then I'm going to go into the variables and we're going to create a new variable. And this one's going to be called X position two. And so this is the X position of the second background. Uh, we can start by setting its Y to zero because it's always Y is always zero. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to change all these from X position one to now X position two for this one. And so it's the exact same set of code, but we're using two instead. And then the other thing we're going to need to do, if I run this right now, you're going to see it looks exactly the same. And that's because the two images are currently stacked right on top of each other. Their X positions are exactly the same, right? So what we want to do is we want to offset this other one. We want to set X position two to 480 pixels over from from this one so if we look back at our image here we want it to look like this right if this if our first image is set at zero right it's zero the middle is zero right here and it's completely filling the screen then the other one has to be set its middle has to be set at 480 because 480 is how wide this uh our screen is and so we set this one at 480 we set this one at zero and then they line up next to each other like that so we'll change x position 2 to be set to 480 by default and now if I click start, you'll see that we have uh, uh, the two of them there. And, and look, this already actually looks pretty smooth. The second image comes in pretty nice here. We might want to round out these corners a little bit. We might also want to get rid of the moon. I don't know if the moon looks very good repeating like this. Um, but yeah, that's working great. Uh, the problem, of course, is that we've only really offset our problem a little bit because now we have a little bit more space to work with and we have this nice transition here. But if we go too far left or too far right, we run right back into uh, all that white space again. And we really don't want to see that white space. We want to have this background keep repeating. 
And so this is where we're getting to this point where we have the two of them have moved over. We're like this, that's where we're at right now. We've moved these two over to here. And what should happen here when, when we get to here is this background now, it's no longer needed. It's not even being shown on the screen. We want to move it back over here so that it comes to fill this spot. And this 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 is filled in with with our with our background one image here moves over to moves over to uh moves over to up here. So since our screen width is 480, that means what we need to do in our logic is say when we move when we move so that this screen when this when this image gets to negative 480, which means it's completely off the screen. If it's, ne if it's negative 480 or less, then we want to move it to 480. And then the same is true in the other direction too. So if we move this way and this one gets to 480, then we want to move it from 480 back to negative 480. And so we can take care of that with two pretty simple if statements, actually. So we're going to say, if our x position is greater than, if our x position 1 is, whoops, if our x position 1 is greater than negative uh, 480, or sorry, if our x position 1 is less than negative 480, if it's off the screen to the left, then we want to set it back to 480. If it's all the way to the left over here, if it's gotten all the way to the left, we want to move it back over to 480 over here. So I'm going to say set x position 1 to 480. And then otherwise we want to do the opposite. We want to say if x position is here, I probably shouldn't have copied that after place basically everything. If x position 1 is greater than 480, if x position 1 is greater than 480, meaning it's all the way to this side, all the way to the right over here, we want to set it back to the left so that we can go backwards. So we'll set this to negative 480. And then we need to do the exact same thing for this one over here. So let me just drag those in real quick. Except, of course, these ones will be for x position 2 instead. So this will be. We'll take these out, we'll switch these to x position 2. And now we should, this should work. You never know though, let's test it out. So if I move forward now, uh, we still have the second one here. We knew that worked before, that already worked. But now when we get to here, you'll see, well, there's a little bit of a gap here, which we'll fix in just a second, but you'll see it keeps repeating those two images over and over again now. So now we can keep walking forward forever and it'll just keep resetting and it'll keep moving the image. Once the image gets back here, it'll move it back over to here. You can kind of see it happen there at the, at the edge of the screen. You can kind of see it, it glitch there as it moves Boop, over to here, which is pretty cool. One thing we do want to fix is this little weird gap in our background. So that happens because these costumes, even though they it, it looks like they're the whole size of the screen, there's sort of still a little bit of space in between them. And so we can fix that by making them just a little bigger. The easiest way I've found to do this is just convert this to a vector. And then you can take this whole object and sort of make it just a little bit wider. I think it's the other direction. Wider on the right, is that right? Yes, there we go. So we make it just a little bit wider and that'll cover up that gap. So now if I, if I, uh, if I, start running forward, we shouldn't see that gap anymore anywhere. We'll just double check real quick. Yeah, that looks good. And that looks like we have an infinite uh, scrolling backdrop, which is exactly what we set out to do today. So and now I'm going to really quickly summarize everything that we just did, just in case, because this code can be very confusing, if, especially if this is the first time you're getting used to working with variables like this. This is sort of a very different way to use variables and sort of play with the Scratch game engine than what you may have encountered before. So I'm just going to go over all this real quick. So first of all, what we're doing, this should make this model should make a lot of sense now. What we're doing is we're taking these two images and we're moving them. So it, whenever one image gets all the way to the left, we take the image on the it's all the way to the left and now hidden. We put it on the right, and then we can keep scrolling forever just by moving these images over. And then we can scroll the other way too, just by doing it the opposite way. If we go too far to the right, then the one that's not shown can be moved over to the left, and then we can just keep going like that forever in either direction, which is super useful. And then how the code actually works is so we set we set her speed to some value. If she's not moving, it's zero. If she's moving right, it's plus three. If she's moving left, it's negative three. And then we create these two objects, these two background objects, and they have almost the same code. We start one at x position zero because x position zero is right here in the center of the screen. We start the other one at x position 480 because that puts it to the right of the screen. 
and then x position changes forever we are forever checking if 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 her current whatever her current speed is we're changing her the x position of these two background objects by that amount so x position one is getting changed by that amount and x position two is also getting changed by that amount so if it's zero they don't move at all because negative one times zero is zero so x position doesn't change if it's plus three then she, the background moves minus three because the background should be moving in the opposite direction that she's moving and vice versa if it's negative three, then the background moves plus three because negative one times negative three is three. And then we set the X position to that value. So this part, this first part changes the variable and then this part actually sets the variable so that it goes to that spot. And then we have these two if statements at the end. And what the two if statements do is they check whenever we go to the edge, whenever one of these things disappears from this edge, whenever we get to negative 480, whenever one of these gets like all the way to negative 480, then it sets it over to 480. And then the second one does the opposite. If we go too far to the right, it sets it back to, to the left. And so there you go. That's how to create a scrolling backdrop in Scratch. Uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about how to use gravity. And we're going to create some jumping and falling animations for our character so we can get a little bit more movement in here than just going backwards and forwards.